Hello, and welcome to this presentation on using speech recognition software as an assistive technology for writing. First, let's start by looking at this writing sample from a 17-year-old with a learning disability. One night, when I was walking home from a basketball game, I heard a noise behind me. I turned around and did not see anything, so I walked back to find out. When I looked, I saw some tracks, so I followed the tracks into the woods. The woods got darker and darker as I got deeper into the woods and started to hear weird noises. I heard a twig move off to my right and turned to see what it was. Then an animal ran out in front of me, and then I saw that it was a small bobcat. There's some nice things going on here. Kind of an interesting story. There's a clear sense of beginning, middle, and end. The author builds suspense, you know, what's in the woods, and then resolves it. However, I think you would agree that the spelling stands in the way. You can usually figure out what the author means to say, but it slows you down. And it may also leave the reader with the impression that the author has not checked their work carefully. Let's compare that sample to another sample produced by a high school student, but a high school student without a learning disability. As I step out of the pickup, it hits me, the smell of manure drifting down from the barn. A sliding glass door swishes open, and clomping down the ramp is my boss, Robert Taylor. Put your lunch in the van, Steve. I'll be there in a minute. I turn and walk toward the van, an old 69 green and white Dodge Sportsman, covered with an inch of dust. When I open the door and peer in, it reminds me of a walk-in trash can. The floor lies out of sight underneath a sea of garbage. I kick some garbage out of my way and hop up in the seat. Before long, here comes Rob, clomping across the driveway. He opens the door, groans as he gets up into his seat, cranks the motor over, and the motor sputters to a start, filling the air inside the van with the smell of burnt oil. My first impression is that we won't make it out of the driveway, but we sputter out onto the road and head toward town. Again, nice sequence of events. You have an understanding of the perspective of the author, but probably the biggest difference, or at least one of the big differences, is that there's far fewer spelling errors. Typically in the adult population, we see two to three spelling errors per hundred words, or a spelling error rate of two to three percent. For high school students and adults with learning disabilities, typically the error rate is 10% or higher. Probably the other thing you may notice here is that the student without a learning disability is using a wider range of vocabulary items. The boss clumps, the motor sputters. We have the sense that the high school student without a learning disability is making unrestricted use of the vocabulary that they know and also they are demonstrating their understanding that in written work we typically use a wider range of vocabulary items than we do in spoken conversation. These two samples do a good job of illustrating some of the differences between the work of skilled and unskilled writers or the work of students without learning disabilities and the work of students with learning disabilities. Students with learning disabilities often write in imitation of speech, so they experience difficulty with doing some of the things in writing that we typically do in order to paint a vivid picture of an event. One of the reasons for this may be the difficulty that they experience with spelling. Students with learning disabilities may restrict the vocabulary or the number of different words that they use because of their concern that they will misspell those words. So they tend to stick to a more restricted vocabulary uh, in order to guard against spelling even more words incorrectly. Interesting to think about an appropriate goal for students with and without learning disabilities in writing narrative texts. If we look at the Common Core State Standards, we see that the goal in high school is that 
Learners will write narratives to develop real or imagined experiences or events using effective technique, well-chosen details, and well-structured event sequences. The learner will engage and orient the reader by setting out a problem, situation, or observation and its significance, establishing one or multiple points of view, and introducing a narrator and or characters. They will also create a smooth progression of experiences or events. Both authors here have done a reasonable job of that, so you know, I think you could say that the student with a learning disability does have a, a sense of telling a story. There is a point of view. Uh, there is a smooth progression of experiences or events. Where the student with a learning disability struggles, though, is in the next part of the standard. That the learner will use precise words and phrases, telling details, and sensory language to convey a vivid picture of the experiences, events, setting, and or characters. So, we see some ideas in that area for the student with a learning disability, but clearly the restricted vocabulary and the difficulty they experience in spelling is uh, making it difficult for them to reach this standard. There's a variety of assistive technology that we can look at for students who are struggling. Um, in this particular module, we'll be focusing on the use of speech recognition software, and we'll be looking at a particular piece of software called Mac Speech Dictate. Speech recognition software uh, involves the use of a headset, so a microphone and headphones, as well as specialized software. And what the software does is type what is said. Speech recognition software can be used with any computer-based writing activity, so it can be used to enter text into word processing programs like Microsoft Word, email programs like Google Mail, and for internet search activities. Speech recognition software can be used both to enter text into a particular application and also to give commands to the software package, so you can tell it to you know, return, delete, make page breaks within a document, you can also use it to make commands to the computer itself, so to open a particular application, to close down a file, that sort of thing. In using speech recognition software, there's a couple of things to think about. First, it's important to first train the software. So the software needs to learn how the user pronounces particular words. So you can probably imagine some of the differences between, say, uh, someone from Boston talking to a computer or using speech recognition, or a person from Philadelphia, or a person from California. Particular regional accents can pose some challenges for software recognition. So one of the first steps is to tell the software a series of words uh, pronounced by the specific user and then the software listens to the words that are spoken and then uses that information in making predictions about other words spoken by that user. Second, we need to prepare the user to use speech recognition software. The current generation of speech recognition software works best when there is natural, continuous speech. If the user stops and waits as the speech recognition program is recognizing the text, the software will stop and wait for you. Uh, this can result in, in poor accuracy by the software recognition program. As a result, it's typically best to work from some sort of written outline. So it's not necessary to write out everything you're going to say to the speech recognition software program. That would kind of defeat the purpose. But typically it's a pretty good idea to have at least an outline of what it is that you want to say so that there's not a lot of pauses, a lot of umming and aahing uh, while you're using the speech recognition software. Please continue on in this module to see examples of the use of speech recognition software.